Hello and welcome to today's lesson on current potential difference graphs which is part of the electricity topic in GCSE Combined Science Physics. So in today's lesson we're going to try and identify various current potential difference graphs for different components. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson we should be able to understand what a current potential difference graph is, recognize different components from the potential difference in current graphs and finally explain the shape of different current potential difference graphs. Graphs. We're listening to the following part of the GCSE Combined Science Physics Specification. Now, in this topic, we're looking at the concepts of electrical circuits and how they operate. Now, to do this, we've got to measure certain values in electrical circuits. Now, the most common values to measure in electrical circuits are current and potential difference. Now, remember, current is the rate of flow of charge, in this case, electrons in the circuit, and potential difference is the work done per charge by a device to move these particles. So, it's important to know that when we, we look at these particular values, we we can work out their values by looking at by measuring with ammeters and voltmeters respectively. So in physics we use an ammeter to measure current. Now it should be placed in series because it has a low resistance. Now you've got to think to yourself well why should an ammeter have a low resistance? Now an ammeter has a low resistance otherwise it would interfere with its own readings. So as because having a resistance would slow down the current it's trying to measure. Now a voltmeter uh, measures potential difference and should be placed in parallel and that's because it has a high resistance but once again why should the voltmeter have a high resistance well a voltmeter has a high resistance as it measures the change in energy electrons possess before and after a component so if the voltmeter has a low resistance the electrons will go through the voltmeter and not the component now it's important to also think about in theory what the ideal resistance of a voltmeter well, the ideal voltmeter would have a resistance so high that no electrons would travel through it and only go through the component in the circuit. So in theory, an ideal voltmeter has an infinite resistance. Now we can then analyze in physics properties of different electrical components by looking at their current potential difference graphs when we take the measurements of current and potential difference. But what does the gradient of a current potential difference graph show and what can you tell from looking at these graphs? Now, to be honest with you, you, it would be a much easier process if the graph we used was a potential difference current graph with potential difference on the y-axis and current on the x-axis. This is because if we know that gradient is the change in y-axis over the change in x-axis, in this case it will be potential difference over current which would give you the resistance. Now we don't use these types of graphs because we in fact place the current on the y-axis and the potential difference on the x-axis. So what does this show? Well this shows us not the resistance but in fact one over the resistance or something called the conductance. So what this means is for a current potential difference graph the steeper the line the higher the conductance the lower the resistance of the circuit. So in our current potential difference graphs our gradient is current over potential difference which is one over resistance which is the conductance so we know this is an important idea because it tells you how well current will flow through the material so if we plot current on the y-axis and potential difference on the x-axis of a graph we can then plot a line of best fit on this graph now just remember results for a current potential difference graph can be obtained by varying the resistance through the circuit with a variable resistor then for different values of circuit resistance the current and potential difference are measured and then plotted on the graph we can then look at the gradient of the line to look at the properties of the device so like we just mentioned before if if we plot current on the y-axis and potential difference on the x-axis of a graph, we know that therefore the gradient is current over potential difference for our line of best fit, so our gradient is 1 over resistance or is equal to the conductance. So this means the steeper the gradient, the lower the resistance, the better the electrical conductor. It means the shallower the gradient, the higher the resistance, the worse the electrical conductor. Now you need to be able to determine the electrical component from the potential, the current potential difference graphs. Now there are three current potential difference graphs which need to be memorized for different electrical components. That is the current potential difference graph for the resistor, the bulb or the filament bulb and the diode. So the first current potential difference graph we'll look at is the resistor's current potential difference graph.
So you'll notice that the current through flowing through a resistor at a constant temperature is directly proportional to the potential difference across it. So the resistor will obey Ohm's law. Now this is shown as the line of best fit in our current potential difference graph has a constant gradient. It is a straight line. This means that the resistance is constant for all currents and potential differences. But remember this only works as when the temperature is constant. Now remember what we said before, the steeper the straight line, the smaller the resistance. So components which have a constant gradient are called ohmic components. They follow Ohm's law and they have a constant resistance. So for ohmic components, the current and potential difference are directly proportional. This means that we can show this on a graph because it's a straight line through an origin. Now remember that if any graph has a straight line of best fit through the origin, the x and the y axis values are in direct proportion to each other. Now, like we mentioned before, the steeper the line, the lower the resistance of the ohmic component. Because remember, the gradient of our line and the resistance are inversely linked. The steeper the line, the lower the resistance. Now, ohmic components will produce a curving line if the temperature changes, because this would lead to the resistance changing. Remember, Ohm's law is only obeyed at constant temperatures. So a straight line in an IV graph shows the temperature of the component must be remaining constant. Now, the next type of current potential difference graph we've got to look at is the light bulb or the filament bulb. So what happens is this is a component that heats up when an electrical current passes through it and produces light as a result. So you'll notice in this example the filament lamp does not follow Ohm's law because when the potential difference across the bulb increases the temperature of the bulb increases. This happens so what this means is that the metal ions will vibrate further in the filament bulb and collide more with the electrons moving through the air filament. This will therefore increase the resistance of the bulb. Now again remember that the gradient and the resistance in this particular current potential difference graph are inversely linked. The steeper the line the lower the resistance, the flatter the line the higher the resistance. Now remember this is increasing the resistance because it's making it more difficult for the electrons to flow through the wire. That This is why the line starts to become flatter. It has a higher resistance. So the resistance of any metal increases as its temperature temperature increases. Now like we mentioned before we know the filament lamp does not follow Ohm's law because it's not a straight line graph but you'll also notice that reversing the potential difference reverses the current and makes no difference to the shape of the curve because in this particular component the resistance is the same for, is the same, for the same current regardless of the direction. So let's just summarize what we know. In the center of our particular current potential difference graph, the bulb is cooler here, so therefore there is a smaller resistance, so a steeper line. But on either side, when the potential difference increases, the bulb is hotter, so there's more resistance. Now remember that the bulb has a constant resistance at low values of potential difference, so it obeys Ohm's law at low values. So it's shown because at low values it has a straight line. So at low values of potential difference, the temperature is constant. Now it's important to note that a bulb breaks as the resistance is low when the bulb is off so a big current passes through it when you switch it on so if the current then becomes too big the filament can burn out. Now the final component you've got to be aware of for its current potential difference graph is the diode. Now the diode is used to regulate voltage in the circuit and to make logic gates but this works because it only allows current to flow in one direction. There are one way systems of electrical circuits so this means that the diode has a very high resistance in one direction but an, a very low resistance in the other direction. So this means the current can only flow in one direction so it will only allow current to flow over a certain value of potential difference. Now the resistance of the diode is very high in one direction until a particular value of potential difference which is why the line is flat which we therefore call the value of potential difference where the resistance starts to decrease we call that the threshold potential difference which is normally one point six volts for a standard diode so at this point the current can pass through easily and the line becomes steeper so you'll notice that um, the electrons are moving in the opposite direction on the left hand side so there's a high resistance we know this because it's a flat line 
but on the right hand side the electrons are moving in that direction so there's less resistance we know that because it's a steep line now we can actually describe direction in physics with the plus and the minus sign these denote opposite directions so in the negative direction there's a high resistance in the positive direction there is a low resistance now a diode which emits light when a current passing through it uh, is passed through it is called a light emitting diode or LED so let's summarize what we know about for current potential difference graphs if you've got a straight line this shows a constant resistance and it shows us that at this point Ohm's law is being obeyed and the device at this point must have a constant temperature. A flat line shows a very high resistance and at this point the device has no current flowing through it and finally a curving line shows an increasing resistance. At this point Ohm's law is not obeyed and the temperature of the device is increasing. So a straight or flat line gives a constant resistance and a curving line gives a changing resistance. So let's summarize what we've learned in today's lesson. You should be able to explain that for some resistors the value of R remains constant but then in others it can change as current changes. The current through an ohmic conductor at a constant temperature is directly proportional to the potential difference across the resistor. This means resistance remains constant as the current changes. But the resistance of components such as lamps, diodes, thermistors and LDRs is not constant, it changes with the current through the component. So the resistance of a filament lamp increases as the temperature of the filament increases, whilst the current through a diode flows in one direction direction only and the diode has a very high resistance in the reverse direction. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand what a current potential difference graph is, recognize different components from different current potential difference graphs, and finally explain the shape of different current potential difference graphs. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson where we've looked at current potential difference graphs in the electricity topic in GCSE Combined Science Physics. I hope you've enjoyed this particular lesson and as always, have a lovely day.